know, I'll just leave it at that. Like that. start of the main event so you've probably got time to tidy the kitchen take the trash out and grab yourself a drink before we get going if you've never seen Zwift before it's an online game where athletes from all over the world train compete against and socialize with each other live and in real time all you need to take part is a foot pod an internet connection access to a treadmill and a device on which to run the Zwift app you can use a computer, an iPad, an iPhone, a high-end Android device. Swift even works on Apple TV. If you have a smart treadmill, you don't even need a foot pod, as your treadmill will send your speed direct to Swift. Once you've logged in and made sure your equipment is connected, you can join others live for structured group workouts or social runs. You could do a solo workout or take part in one of the many in-game challenges. You could also pit yourself against people from all over the world in a race. There are various Zwift worlds. Some are based on existing places like London, New York, Innsbruck, Richmond, Virginia and Harrogate in the UK. But the biggest world is the fictional Watopia, where you can run in glass tunnels underwater, through the middle of a volcano, in a jungle, up to the top of a snow-capped mountain and on country trails. Watopia is where the Zwift developers let their imagination fly. Like any computer game, the more you run, the higher up the levels you climb and the more virtual goodies you require. If you're a regular treadmill runner, Zwift is going to transform your training. If you're a hater, Zwift is going to change the way you think about indoor running. Before we go any further, if you're watching on YouTube, please click that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified every time we go live on this channel. If you're watching on Facebook, please click the like button on the Film My Run page. Film My Run is also my other YouTube channel where I post real world runs. So if you're interested in marathons, ultra running, 10Ks or triathlons, you'll find product reviews, interviews and races over on that channel. I've been running all my life. I started running long distance races in 2011 when I ran my first half marathon and that was followed a year later by my first marathon in Paris. I've run the Paris Marathon every year since and have now run well over 100 marathons and ultras. I started using Zwift at the beginning of 2015 when indoor cycling and smart trainers really took off. In the early days, I held the long distance record for cycling of 500 kilometers on Zwift for about 48 hours. And when running started in 2016, I was the first person to run a marathon on Zwift. So if you have any questions about Zwift, if I don't know the answer, I probably know somebody who does. Okay, so now you can go and take the trash out and get that drink. And make sure you keep an eye on that countdown and be back in time for the start proper. Well, go on then. Don't just sit there gawping at me. Basically, this message is going to go around in a loop again and again until the start of the run. So you may as well go and do something constructive in the meantime. Welcome to this Zwift Run live stream. My name is Stephen. I'm a Zwift ambassador, a community run leader and your host today. There's a countdown clock up there showing how long to go before the start of the main event. So you've probably got time to tidy the kitchen, take the trash out and grab yourself a drink before we get going. If you've never seen Zwift before, it's an online game where athletes from all over the world train, compete against and socialize with each other live and in real time. 
All you need to take part is a foot pod, an internet connection, access to a treadmill and a device on which to run the Zwift app. You can use a computer, an iPad, an iPhone, a high-end Android device. Zwift even works on Apple TV. If you have a smart treadmill, you don't even need a foot pod as your treadmill will send your speed direct to Zwift. Once you've logged in and made sure your equipment is connected, you can join others live for structured group workouts or social runs. You could do a solo workout or take part in one of the many in-game challenges. You could also pit yourself against people from all over the world in a race. There are various Zwift worlds. Some are based on existing places like London, New York, Innsbruck, Richmond, Virginia and Harrogate in the UK. The biggest world is the fictional Watopia, where you can run in glass tunnels underwater, through the middle of a volcano, in a jungle, up to the top of a snow-capped mountain and on country trails. Watopia is where the Zwift developers let their imagination fly. Like any computer game, the more you run, the higher up the levels you climb and the more virtual goodies you require. If you're a regular treadmill runner, Zwift is going to transform your training. If you're a hater, Zwift is going to change the way you think about indoor running. Before we go any further, if you're watching on YouTube, please click that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified every time we go live on this channel. If you're watching on Facebook, please click the like button on the Film My Run page. Film My Run is also my other YouTube channel where I post real world runs. So if you're interested in marathons, ultra running, 10Ks or triathlons, you'll find product reviews, interviews and races over on that channel. I've been running all my life. I started running long distance races in 2011 when I ran my first half marathon and that was followed a year later by my first marathon in Paris. I've run the Paris Marathon every year since and have now run well over 100 marathons and ultras. I started using Zwift at the beginning of 2015 when indoor cycling and smart trainers really took off. In the early days, I held the long distance record for cycling of 500 kilometers on Zwift for about 48 hours. And when running started in 2016, I was the first person to run a marathon on Zwift. So if you have any questions about Zwift, if I don't know the answer, I probably know somebody who does. Okay, so now you can go and take the trash out and get that drink. And make sure you keep an eye on that countdown and be back in time for the start proper. Well, go on then. Don't just sit there gawping at me. Basically, this message is going to go around in a loop again and again until the start of the run. So you may as well go and do something constructive in the meantime. Welcome to this Zwift Run live stream. My name is Stephen. I'm a Zwift ambassador, a community run leader and your host today. There's a countdown clock up there showing how long to go before the start of the main event. So you've probably got time to tidy the kitchen, take the trash out and grab yourself a drink before we get going. If you've never seen Zwift before, it's an online game where athletes from all over the world train, compete against and socialise with each other live and in real time. All you need to take part is a foot pod, an internet connection, access to a treadmill and a device on which to run the Zwift app. You can use a computer, an iPad, an iPhone, a high-end Android device. Zwift even works on Apple TV. If you have a smart treadmill, you don't even need a foot pod as your treadmill will send your speed direct to Zwift. Once you've logged in and made sure your equipment is connected, you can join others live for structured group workouts or social runs. You could do a solo workout or take part in one of the many in-game challenges. You could also pit yourself against people from all over the world in a race. There are various Zwift worlds. Some are based on existing places like London, New York, Innsbruck, Richmond, Virginia and Harrogate in the UK. But the biggest world is the fictional Watopia, where you can run in glass tunnels underwater, through the middle of a volcano, in a jungle, up to the top of a snow-capped mountain and on country trails. Watopia is where the Zwift developers let their imagination fly. Like any computer game, the more you run, the higher up the levels you climb and the more virtual goodies you require. 
If you're a regular treadmill runner, Zwift is going to transform your training. If you're a hater, Zwift is going to change the way you think about indoor running. Before we go any further, if you're watching on YouTube, please click that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified every time we go live on this channel. If you're watching on Facebook, please click the like button on the Film My Run page. Film My Run is also my other YouTube channel where I post real world runs. So if you're interested in marathons, ultra running, 10Ks or triathlons, you'll find product reviews, interviews and races over on that channel. I've been running all my life. I started running long distance races in 2011 when I ran my first half marathon and that was followed a year later by my first marathon in Paris. I've run the Paris Marathon every year since and have now run well over 100 marathons and ultras. I started using Zwift at the beginning of 2015 when indoor cycling and smart trainers really took off. In the early days, I held the long distance record for cycling of 500 kilometers on Zwift for about 48 hours. And when running started in 2016, I was the first person to run a marathon on Zwift. So if you have any questions about Zwift, if I don't know the answer, I probably know somebody who does. Okay, so now you can go and take the trash out and get that drink. And make sure you keep an eye on that countdown and be back in time for the start proper. Well, go on then. Don't just sit there gawping at me. Basically, this message is going to go around in a loop again and again until the start of the run. So you may as well go and do something constructive in the meantime. Film My Run on Zwift. My name is Stephen Cousins and we are broadcasting live on Facebook and on YouTube. While we're getting everything ready, it would be absolutely awesome if you could go and subscribe to the Film My Run YouTube channel and also the Zwift Live YouTube channel. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Film My Run and also Twitter at Film My Run and the website is www.filmmyrun.com. It's very nearly time, so sit back, relax, don't forget to drop me a ride on and watch me do all the hard work. Seriously, I'm massively late. I haven't even got my shoes on. I need to go and go and get my shoes on. <laughs> uh, but we're going to run with Jeff Partridge, who is doing, attempting to do 100 miles on the treadmill. And uh, he's uh, struggling a little bit, we think, at the moment. He's got some knee pain. So um, I'm going to just click, in a minute, I'm going to click uh, Jeff's name to run with Jeff. But you'll have to just bear with me for like 30 seconds while I run into the house and get my trainers. 
so I can actually run on the drum. Um, I also, I also need to set up chat. So I'm going to be running quite slowly for half an hour or so. So if you want to say hello and have a chat, uh, then I will be able to talk. If you've got any questions you want to ask. Let's see. Once again, it looks like Facebook has crashed. Which is very annoying. It, this is doing it too often. Okay, so I'm just going to go in the house, put the trainers on, we'll come back out here, I'll sort out why this is working, and, uh, and then we'll get running. So apologies for the lateness, the tardiness of my uh, arrival, but we'll get going momentarily. Five kilometers with get. Two seconds, I'll be back. So he is approaching, he's basically got 100k to go. better it was sound was breaking up yesterday a little bit as well i noticed uh, but hopefully that is a bit better and now we'll go on to uh, youtube facebook on. turn facebook off and then turn it on again and hopefully it will just connect and we'll be able to get going Come on. There we are, right. Facebook is connected. Uh, Rob Harrison says, uh, does Jeff have his own live stream? I do not believe he does. No, I don't think he's live streaming. Right, let's go to here. Just get Facebook set up on here. This is the third stream in a row that Facebook has died on me. Right, I am now broadcasting on Facebook and on YouTube. Maybe if I go into settings of the microphone and just change a couple of things. Hold on one second and let me see if I can change something. I'll get running in a minute. Right, I've 
just just change something slightly and I'll just change one other thing as well hold on I know this is annoying I'm sorry it's always fun to watch me fiddling with my uh, equipment isn't it right let's just take the, the noise gate down a bit one two three four one three hang on a minute no 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 is that right one two three yeah that way okay so let's have it on about 70 let's see if that makes any difference post it's quite loud isn't it let's take it down one more right there we go okay and uh right let's get running with jeff so jeff partridge is on 61 and a half kilometers run with jeff let's get the treadmill going oh need heart rate that's annoying need heart rate uh, jeff's not going terribly fast uh, Buenaventura, no, haven't started yet. I'm just uh, going to run a few slow kilometres with Jeff Partridge. Jeff Partridge is attempting to run 100 miles on the treadmill, but he is. Oh, there, there's my tour for all running shirt unlocked. There we are. Right, where's Jeff? Okay, Jeff is there running at 7.25 per kilometre. Just walk slowly, which is me. I'm four seconds behind. Oh, D map is running with Jeff. So I'm five seconds behind. Uh, let's give Jeff a ride on again. I gave him one earlier on, but he's due another one, I think. <laughs> Why? What am I doing? Right, I'm going to do about 5k with you, uh, Jeff. I don't know if he's listening. Um, Ryan Perring says he might jump on as well. Where am I? Right, look, I'm, I'm 15 seconds behind. So I need to uh, find where he is. I set up my heart rate as well, don't I? Right, let's just let's set up heart rate and then we'll catch him up. Right, okay, there they are, up ahead, look. Okay, let's get heart rate going. Uh, pair, heart rate, waggle it around a bit. It's gonna be one of those things where it doesn't pick up my heart rate now, isn't it? There it is. Okay, back, heart rate. Uh, Buenaventura, I will try and get a list of those songs together and, uh, and let you know. Right, where's Jeff gone? It looks like I'm turning to the right. I don't know if Jeff's turning right. Right, oh no, see now, this is typical, isn't it? I don't know which way he's gone, because I can't see him up ahead. <laughs> I might have to log out and log back in again to find him. Well, I'm going to Desert Flats anyway. So, if he's up ahead, he's up ahead. If he's not... There they are. Yeah. Let's just catch them up. Uh, so, I think Jeff is running the Uber Pretzel route. So the Uber pretzel is the longest route you can do on Zwift. Uh, thanks for the ride on, Jeff. Ride on. Uh, 
Uh, the, the Uber pretzel is 79 miles long. So if you get to the end of that, you've done a pretty decent job on Zwift. Yes, Jeff says he's doing the Uber pretzel. Just confirming it on screen there. Uh, Jeff, how is the knee? That's the main question. <laughs> uh, Buenaventura says, uh, it's your fault I can't run without listening to songs. To, oh, to my songs. Oh, no. Right, so now we're back up with Jeff, so let's slow right down. Uh, Jeff is actually going faster than I was going on my 100. So, uh, he's doing well. Just to work out what pace he's going. Right, so uh, Jeff says his, his knee is a bit sore, but his stomach is the biggest issue. Well, you know what to do about that, Jeff, because it's, it's really warm. If you can just hold out till it gets dark and cools down, your stomach will ease up a lot, mate. Just, uh, just manage. Uh, Jeff's having longer rests than I did. I think I was resting for about between three and five minutes for every hour. But um, occasionally I had one or two longer rests. Uh, early in the morning, I had a shower. And it took about 15 minutes. Um, Neil Messenger, hello to you. And Tom White. Uh, Tom, I'm only doing about 5K because uh, my dinner's nearly ready. But uh, I heard that uh, Jeff... So we've got... We're following Jeff Partridge here. And uh, Jeff Partridge is um, running as far as he can on the treadmill today. He was hoping to do 100 miles on the treadmill. He's about, he's got 100k to go, just under 100k to go, uh, but he's got some knee problems and stomach issues at the moment. So we need to try and get him through, well, he needs to try and get through this low period, which you always get in ultras, in long distance running, you'll always get a period when you feel like death and you just want to give up, especially when it feels like you've still got quite a long way to go. But Jeff's pretty experienced, done this before. He does know when to stop. If he's going to stop, he'll know that it's the right thing to do. Uh, but also, um, he knows that he can come through the other side because he's done it before plenty of times. Uh, so he's pretty experienced. Uh, so it's just a case of getting through this bad patch. And I think it's partly because the weather is so warm today your stomach often plays up a lot more when it's hot weather. Uh, thanks for the ride-ons, by the way, that are dropping. Ride on! I runs on... Uh, Kim runs on plants. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Ryan Perring is getting set up. He's going to join us in a few minutes, he says. So we should have a few people for five, five kilometres or so with Jeff this afternoon. Uh, Neil Messenger says, I've ordered a Reebok treadmill, so I'm looking forward to fun with you guys and keeping up with you. It'd be nice to have you on board, Neil. My camera too is playing up recently as well. What's all that about? Look, it's very jerky and slow, isn't it? Need to sort that out. Have a look at that somewhere. So, yes, uh, Jeff is 62.7 kilometres in to his run on Zwift. And we are, we're doing this week in the UK, there's an event called the Centurion One event, which is a virtual running event organised by Centurion Running. And Centurion Running are one of the big running companies 
in the UK, certainly the biggest in the south of England, and uh, definitely one of the biggest in the UK. And they organise classic ultra distance races, so 50 miles and 100 mile races. And that's pretty much all they do. They don't do 10Ks, they don't do half marathons or marathons. It's 50 miles or 100 miles and that's it. And, uh, and they've been going for a long time, organized, run by uh, James Elson. And uh, obviously because of uh, lockdown around the world, uh, most of Centurion's races, all, almost all of Centurion's races this year have been cancelled. Uh, so they have organised this virtual event. And this virtual event you can do uh, 5k, 10k, half marathon, marathon. And you can also split the distance across the week. So if you want to do 100 miles, you could in theory do the 100 miles split across seven days of the week, which a lot of people are doing. And a lot of kids are getting involved running 5k with their parents. Some people are doing it on the treadmill. Some people are doing it outdoors. So uh, me and uh, my wife are going to take part. We've got a little plan for later in the week. Torsten Nels, thank you for your ride on. I've been playing with lighting this week. So I don't know if you notice outside, behind me there, there's some strip lighting on the wall in the garden. And that's linked to the lights in here. And they should all, when it gets dark, if, it, if I run in the dark at all, it should look quite cool because uh, all the lights should change in line with the colours on the screen in front of me. So basically, if Zwift is on the screen in front of me, the lights should be the colours of Zwift Uh, so because we're running at a sedate pace, um, and that's no disrespect to Jeff, like I said, he is running faster than I was on my 100 miler recently. Uh, and this is, this is the kind of pace that you need to run if you're gonna run 100 miles, unless you're absolutely elite and you're banging it out, or you're Zach Bitter and you're going for the 100 mile world record. Um, you know, you need to pace yourself and uh, this is exactly the kind of pace that you need to be going. Um, but if you're just doing 5k, then it can seem a, a little slow. So we're going at a very sedate pace, and uh, so I can talk. So if you've got any questions, if you're watching this, this uh, for the first time, you've no idea what you're looking at, then do ask away. If you're new to Zwift, or if you, you like I say, you've never seen this before, you wondered what on earth it is. Uh, we're on a, it's an online game an online running game and cycling game where you run in real life but on a treadmill in a virtual world. So we are actually doing the work, as you can see, uh, but it's like a computer game in that you, you go up the levels, you earn points and points win virtual prizes. Ride on! GYZ, thanks for the ride on. And uh, you can run with people from all over the world. Uh, you'll be able to see when the, when the main screen comes up, a list of names on the right hand side of the screen. And all those people are real people uh, from all over the world. Brian Perring has just joined us. So that's Ryan in the blue and orange. 
top there. So now you can see the names on the right hand side. You can see just ahead of me, Jeff Partridge on 63 and a half kilometers. And I'm on 1.9 kilometers. Dan Mapp has been running with uh, Jeff for a little while longer. He's on 2.6 kilometers. And Ryan Perring just started behind. Let's give Ryan a ride on. And let's drop one on Dan's head as well. So there's uh, there's Jeff's um, screen. 63.6 kilometers, less than 100k to go now. If Jeff can get through the night, if Jeff can get into the night, he stands a good chance because the weather will cool down. He will um, have a better stomach. Uh, in the heat, when you're running this far, the hot weather really does make your stomach turn over, especially if you're drinking Coke and kind of sugary drinks. Uh, your stomach can go crazy on you. But if you can get into the night when it's a bit cooler... Oh, wrong person. There we are, back to me. So let's just have a look at heart race. Uh, Jeff's heart rate is 152 BPM, so he is comfortably in uh, zone three, just touching zone four. So if he can stay in zone three, that's, that's what he wants. Don't want to really get into zone four in uh, a hundred mile run. So he's on 150 BPM, uh, steps per minute 165. So uh, decent uh, cadence, short step, short strides, but quick enough to uh, uh, cover the ground and uh, 714, 715 per kilometer. And he's been going uh, moving time. Eight hours, 22, 21 minutes. Eight hours, 21 minutes of moving time. Uh, Jeff says HR too high, really. Yeah, it's a little bit. He, he wants to stay in zone three. And at the moment, he's just touching zone four, just top of zone three, basically. So ideally, he wants to bring that down a little bit. And it might be to do with the heat. It might be to do with his stomach problems. If he can get it down, hopefully, later on in the evening, uh, it'll come down a bit. <laughs> uh, Neil Messenger says, my Reebok treadmill is Bluetooth. So will I get my heart rate connected with my foot pod? Um, you won't get heart rate. I mean, you'll only get heart rate from a heart rate monitor. Um, so I don't know where you normally would get heart rate from if you use a chest strap or your watch, um, but it won't go through the treadmill. Um, if you're saying your foot pot, your, your treadmill is, is Bluetooth, Neil, um, is it Bluetooth as in it sends out data or is it Bluetooth in just that it receives data? So, for example, a lot of Bluetooth, a lot of treadmills that they say are Bluetooth basically just receive Bluetooth signals from your iPhone so it can play music through the speakers. What you want is a Bluetooth treadmill that transmits the data for speed and cadence from your treadmill to Zwift. Um, if you let me know exactly what kind of Reebok treadmill it is, then we can, we can check that.
Uh, so we're, we're running through the desert flats at the moment. Uh, this is Fuego Flats. And um, we're kind of coming out the opposite. We're going the opposite way to what you would normally do. If you were doing an event, you would come the other way through the desert. Um, when I was here, actually, I, I went through Titan's Grove instead of coming this way through the desert. And then I came back through the desert. So I kind of turned off the Uber pretzel route onto Titan's Grove. Uh, because you do the desert twice, this direction and uh, the other direction. Right, so uh, Jeff says he's going to have a break soon. Um, so I don't know how long he's going to have a break for. Jason Darby, good evening to you, buddy. How are you? Uh, Neil's going to let me know what kind of treadmill he's got. Oh, I was just going to message uh, Jeff and uh, my phone has died. Jeff, just get through the night, buddy. Or get into the night. Just get into the cooler weather later on this evening. Okay? If you have to go really slow because of your knee or because of your stomach, just do that. But get through, yeah? And then once you get to 100k, Jeff, honestly, it will start feeling closer and closer. Eight hours, 25 minutes of moving time for Jeff so far. Uh, Ryan Downey says, go Jeff, go. Uh, Jason Darby says, the heat is awful. Yeah, it's pretty warm. Okay, so Jeff's gonna have a five minute break. So what we could do is we could run for two and a half minutes forward and then run two and a half minutes back and hopefully we'll catch Jeff again for another couple of kilometers. Daniel from DIY Tech Repairs, hello buddy. Nice. It's so easy to get set up with Zwift Running. Here's what you need. Firstly, access to a treadmill. It could be at home or at the gym, but any treadmill will work with Zwift. To get you moving in game, we need a speed source. Traditionally, we use a foot pod, like the Zwift pod or the Stride, but you can also use the Run Smart treadmill sensor, your Apple Watch, one of the newer Garmin watches, the TSS app, and if you have a smart treadmill, your treadmill will connect directly to Zwift without the need for another device. Now, simply download the Zwift app onto a Mac, a PC, an iPhone, an iPad, an Android device. Zwift even works on Apple TV. Finally, pair your speed source in the app. Pairing heart rate from your watch or a chest strap is also a great addition to Zwift. And that's it. You're all set up for solo runs, solo or group workouts, challenges and real-time racing on Zwift with people from all over the world. Okay, so uh, Ryan's taken the lead and we've sped up a little bit. Um, I don't know if Ryan's listening, Ryan, but I thought, well, maybe we just run for a couple of minutes, two and a half minutes or so, this direction, and then turn around and go back and see if we can meet Jeff on the way back. Okay, Neil. Um, so Neil says his treadmill is a Reebok Z Jet 460 Bluetooth treadmill. Okay, and we will have a look and see if that is on the list of uh, recommended treadmills for Zwift. Buenaventura, my purple toe is still purple, but not hurting at all when I'm running. So I'm uh, I'm okay with it. Um, I did hurt it this morning. 
and I, uh, I turned on my foot and it just went in the wrong direction and it really hurt. So I've definitely done something to it. But I think wherever, the, if it's broken, wherever the brake is at the top of the toe, it's not affecting my running. Either that or I haven't broken it and it's just, you know, it's a bit sore. Okay, so Dan Mapp is saying he'll spin around with us. So maybe one more, couple more minutes or one more minute in this direction. No, I think he's doing it flat. So Aaron is just asking if Jeff is running with incline. Uh, no, as far as I can see, he's doing it flat. Although having said that, I don't know because his treadmill, of course, may not, it uh, probably doesn't do incline direct. So he may be doing incline actually, I don't know. But I don't think so. Right, shall we turn around? Uh, Jeff Partridge says, yes, he's doing it flat. Uh, right, we're going to turn around and come back and join you, Jeff. Uh, why am I still going this direction? Come on, turn around. Right, we're waiting for Ryan to turn around now. <laughs> right, I think Ryan has turned around. So just run back in this direction and hopefully we'll pick up Jeff at some point, a couple of minutes down the road. Thanks for giving my dad a ride on. Yendel, thank you very much. Um, Jason Darby, yeah, I used to wear Solomons for a, a year or so and I found the same thing too narrow for my feet. Are you talking about road shoes or train trail shoes? I'm assuming trail shoes, because that's what Solomon are best known for. Um, uh, Jason and I wear Hoka's outdoors in the, on the trails. So Hoka Speed Goats for me. I've got a pair of Speed Goat 3s and a pair of Evo Speed Goats. So we're uh, worth having a look at those. Right, we just have to keep our eyes open for Jeff on the other side of the road. I've done four kilometres now. So I was going to do five, but maybe we'll do a few more. We keep going till about eight o'clock, I suppose, eight, eight o'clock UK time. Okay, yeah, um, well, for trails, uh, Jason, um, Hoka Speed Goats for me, and for the road, well, I just use 
Do you know what? I have no particular preference, to be perfectly honest with you. But currently, I'm using New Balance 1080s. Um, I've worn Nike Structure 19s for a long time, but they are... Um, um, they're not neutral, they're for um, overpronation. Uh, but I don't, I don't really believe in this pronating stuff. Right, is that Jeff on the other side of the road there? There he is. Turn around. Where's my mouse gone? Ah! There we are. Turn around. Uh, Ryan's caught me up. Uh, let's catch, let's catch Jeff back up. Uh, Daniel says Salomon Speed Cross and Speed Track are the only things that fit his feet. Uh, he gets half a size up though. Yeah, I also get half a size up in uh, my hokers. But I think for speed goats, for me, even a size up, they're too narrow and then they were getting too long. So much prefer my hocus, to be perfectly honest with you. Right, so we're going to slow down again now. Right, Jeff's on 65 kilometers down. I'm wearing an orange top. Is it my tour for all top? Or is it just a standard Zwift number one shirt? Uh, so if you're wondering what we're doing, this is... Uh, yeah, it is, isn't it? It's a newbie top. Why am I wearing a newbie top? Um, if you're wondering what we're doing, we are running with Jeff Partridge. Jeff is just up ahead of me. He's on 65.3 kilometers of what we're hoping is going to be a 100 mile run on the treadmill. He's suffering a bit at the moment, but you are always going to have periods in a, a long distance race, like long distance run like this, where you are low. Um, so before my dinner comes, I am just going to run uh, well I did say five kilometers but we're nearly at five kilometers now so we're gonna do a few more kilometers with Jeff two or three more hopefully he can get through to the cooler weather this evening as the temperature drops he should start to feel better stomach issues should start to ease and he'll be able to push on through the night fingers crossed But as I said earlier, Jeff is very experienced, knows what he's doing. He'll know if, uh, if he's pushed himself too hard. He's also got a minor knee issue, niggle. Uh, Jeff has suffered with knee problems in the past before. So again, he knows about that and he'll know when he needs to stop, if he needs to stop. Hopefully he doesn't need to stop and we can, yeah, he's saying he is hoping, Stephen. Uh, he can push on and just make it through the night. If he makes it through the night, uh, then he will almost certainly finish. Because the boost you get when you see the sunrise in the morning is, uh, is awesome. 
I did, I did it the other way around in that I started at night. So I had the night section early on and then I had the whole day to push through the rest of the run. I'm not sure which is better really. It's, it's six and two threes to be honest with you because um, if you start at night then you've had a whole day without sleep. So you're starting the run tired already. If you start the run early in the morning, then you've had a good night's sleep, you're fresh to start running. But of course then, as you're really tired at night, that can be quite demoralizing. Um, whereas for me, I got the night section over and done with and I could finish the race, the run, in the daylight. So it's, it's some and some really. And we're doing, um, or Jeff rather, is doing um, an event called the Centurion One, which is a virtual event that's been set up by Centurion Running, a big race company here in the UK who organise 50 miles and 100 mile runs. And because of lockdown, of course, they've all been cancelled. So this event has been set up in its place and uh, everyone has one week to complete their run. Uh, but it could be a 5k, a 10k, a marathon, 50 miles or 100 miles. And you can split the runs over different days. So if you want to do 100 miles, you could split that over the full seven days. <laughs> okay, so Matthias Topping um, has very kindly looked up the uh, Z Jet 460 on behalf of uh, Neil Messenger. And as we suspected, Neil, it is Bluetooth only for your speakers and for your iPod or iPhone. So you can link your iPhone and have music coming out of the speakers, but unfortunately it won't link directly to Zwift. I'm falling behind a bit. That shoots, thanks for the ride on. Ride on. <laughs> I can see Jonathan Cost commenting up there. Uh, he's on the bike because his treadmill's broken, so he's uh, he's getting into the world of Zwift cycling. Good for him. Uh, we're on the desert course, so we are running um, through uh, Tempest Fugit. Thank you, Rob DeBank. Tempest Fugit is the flat desert course. So we're running through that as part of the the longest course on Zwift, which is the Uber Pretzel. And the Uber Pretzel is 79 miles. And that, that's the course that Jeff is currently following. If he can get to the end of that, um, he'll have done 79 miles. He'll only have 21 to go. And it takes you everywhere in Zwift apart from the run routes, so the, the beach route and the track. Um, and it also doesn't take you through Titan's Grove. So maybe what, what I did on my 100 miler was I did the, the whole of the Uber Pretzel. Um, but I also stuck in Titan's Grove, the run path and the track as well to make up the distance. Jeff is on 66. 1 kilometers. So edging closer to the 100 kilometer mark. At 20 miles to go for that. And we've got Ryan Perring and Dan Mapp with us. Just um, giving uh, Jeff a little bit of company for a very short period of time. But uh, do you know what, when I was doing mine, it's absolutely, any, any time that anyone can give you is valued. 
sometimes you do just want to run on your own. Um, but that's kind of the beauty of being on the treadmill because in a way you, you are on your own and so you can kind of zone out a little bit if you want to. But then when you feel like um, Oh right, Jeff says he's just going to start his second loop. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, when you feel like you need company, then you can look at the screen and see the people running with you. So talking about the Uber pretzel, uh, Jeff says if he if he gets that far, so if he gets the 79, 80 miles at the end of the Uber pretzel, he says he's just going to start it again. Well, the thing is, actually, Jeff. The Uber Pretzel finishes at the top of the Alpe de Zwift. So you can't really start it again. You have to, you'll have to come down the Alpe de Zwift. Um, Daniel Wigley asks, Hey buddy, how, can I ask how much would a Zwift setup be on a rough price? Daniel, it depends if you've already got a treadmill. Um, if you've already got a treadmill, then actually, and it depends what watch you've got as well, the, the cost could be zero. If you have um, already got a treadmill, and if you've got a Garmin 245, 945, or Phoenix, Phoenix 6 watch, then you can automatically connect to Zwift with your Phoenix 6 watch. <laughs> Uh, Jeff says, grateful for a bit of company and film my run fame. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got, you'll have at least five or six kilometers of, uh, of your run on, uh, on film, uh, Jeff. It'd be nice if you can get any live coverage from your, your iPhone, your phone, like do a live stream at all. That'd be really good. Right on. Uh, back to Daniel. Um, if you don't have one of those watches, so the 245, 945 or the Phoenix 6 Garmin watches, then you'll need to buy a foot pod. Um, the cheapest foot pod you can get is the Zwift pod, which is about £35. Um, but also, there is an app called the TSS app, a Treadmill Smart Speed, uh, designed by John McManus, who's one of the uh, runners on Zwift, uh, he designed an app that you can um, send your treadmill speed to Zwift from that app. Um, the problem is with it that it's not connected to your treadmill, so every time you increase the speed or slow down on your treadmill, you would have to press to increase the speed on the app or slow down the speed on the app. But that is a very cheap, it's about £2.50 or something for that app. So it could be as cheap as nothing. It could be as cheap as £2.50. It could be as cheap as £35. If you need to buy a treadmill, uh, Ryan Perring says the app is one ninety nine. So there you go. Um, it could be that you go for something a bit more expensive. So the Stride Foot Pod, which Dan Map is recommending, uh, that's um, 150 or 200 pounds, but it's, it's the best foot pod you'll buy. Very accurate. If you need to buy a treadmill, well, my first treadmill I got for 200 pounds on eBay. Um, the treadmill I'm running on now is about two and a half thousand pounds. And I saw somebody who had a treadmill delivered the other day, uh, which is, um, oh, what's it called? A Woodway treadmill, uh, which is about £10,000. So you take your pick, really. Uh, but you can buy smart treadmills, and smart treadmills start at around about £1,000, and they will connect directly to Zwift, so you don't need a foot pod. So, you know, you take your pick, really, from virtually nothing, virtually no expenditure at all, to thousands of pounds. And you can run your, your, your Zwift app on an iPhone or an iPad, or you can have it on a TV screen like this. Um, mine, I've got a big TV screen in front of me. So again, all those things, 
You can either spend a lot of money on or no money at all. Ride on! Howard, thank you very much for the ride on. Seven kilometers for Jeff now. And uh, running into the oasis, the waterfalls, really beautiful part of the uh, Tempest Fugit course here. Thanks for giving my dad a ride on. Uh, Jeff Rich there, thank you very much. Daniel says he better ask for his pocket money to be increased. <laughs> no problems, Dan. Take care, buddy. Of course, the other thing is, Dan, um, you can run outside. You don't have to have a treadmill. I mean, I wouldn't recommend looking at your iPhone screen whilst running down the street. But technically, if you have a foot pod, you could run on the street and be and and be on Zwift at the same time on your phone. As long as your your foot pod connects to your phone, you can run anywhere you want. So you don't even need a treadmill, really. Ride right on, Carl. Thank you for the ride on. So this is the Zwift Run Live channel. Lots of live Zwift running and occasionally some cycling. Not very often, though, to be fair. And uh, I stream almost every day, depending on whether I'm injured or uh, I get told off from my wife for not spending enough time with her. I st <laughs> we stream every day on this channel, in the e mostly in the evenings, UK time. Especially during lockdown, we are on almost every day. So if you're interested in uh, running on Zwift, if you want to see uh, live racing, live workouts, sometimes I just commentate, I don't run and I just talk. Um, we're also thinking of starting a weekly chat program, actually. Uh, so a bit like a video podcast where um, I get, maybe get a guest on every week and uh, we have questions and answer session. Um, advice, Zwift news, that kind of thing. I've been meaning to start that for a long time. Still haven't got round to it, but we're getting ever closer to doing it. <laughs> so there's me running in my newbie orange Zwift top. Bit embarrassing, to be honest. Uh, Ryan Perring says, yes, get that podcast going. I know, I did, you know, I had the idea for it about two years ago, to be perfectly honest. I got very near setting it up last year, and then didn't. And uh, I'm getting a bit closer to setting it up now, I just need to find the day. I think, I'm thinking Wednesday might be the day. We sack off Wednesday workout and uh, do it then. I want to keep Tuesdays and Thursdays free for outdoor running club when that starts up again. Fridays I want to keep free because we often go away at the weekends. Again, after lockdown. Monday we'll keep for Monday Run Club. Or whatever. So, uh, it looks like Wednesday might be the, the only day to do it, but we'll see. Still undecided. Nice view of the waterfall there. 
behind us. I'm now at seven kilometers. So maybe we'll do another three. We'll do we'll do three more kilometers. So 10 kilometers in all. So I'm gonna stop in three more kilometers, go for my dinner. And I wish Jeff the best of luck for the rest of his run. Hopefully he can continue. It is a tough old thing to do. If you're watching, by the way, and you haven't given Jeff a ride on, get the Zwift Companion app out now and drop a ride on on Jeff's head, please. Because he deserves it and he needs the encouragement. Let's have a look. Where is he? There he is. So Jeff's heart rate has come down a little bit. 147 BPM, 145 there. Uh, Jeff's been going, moving for eight hours and 50 minutes now. So uh, his overall time will be longer than that because he's had breaks. Uh, but um, eight hours and 50 minutes of running so far. Steps per minute, 165, 7.15 kilometer, minutes per kilometer. And pumping out a decent eight kilometers per hour, which is way faster than I did my 100 miler. I think for much of mine, I was at seven kilometers per hour, if not slower. is off. Dan's done 8k uh, with uh, <laughs> with Jeff. I think he's finishing now. Well done Dan. Take care buddy. Uh, Jeff is on 68 kilometers now so 20 miles to go to get to 100k. And then it's basically counting down from there. We're going to stick with Jeff for another two and a half kilometers. We'll get to 10 kilometers done. And uh, that'll be us for the evening. And uh, maybe we can come back tomorrow. If Jeff is still going, we'll come and join Jeff uh, tomorrow for another 10K or so. And Ryan Downey is on the bike with us. Just behind. <laughs> I would message guys on the screen, but I, my phone's died, so I can't really. So there's Ryan on the bike with the orange headband. <laughs> Me not paying attention has fallen back a couple of seconds, so. Need to catch up to the back of the guys. Yeah, I know, sorry. I'm coming, I'm coming. So 
So it's about here that you need a, to be able to reach out your hand and slap the back of the cyclist's head. <laughs> Just uh, coming through the old mining town now on Tempest Fugit. Not, not Tempest Fugit, Fuego Flats. Where's Tempest Fugit? Where's that? Why have I got that in my head? Fuego Flats is what we're on. A desert route running through the old mining village. Tempest Fugit is this route as well. Okay, that's why then. Forks on your bike, Ryan. is acting as security for us, making sure no other bikes get too close, clearing the way for us as we come through. Oh, Jeff is now at the stage where he's trying to type and nothing's coming out, look, blank screen. <laughs> the sheriff's in town and the train is rolling by. I don't feel cool enough. I haven't got a beard and I'm wearing a newbie orange shirt. What's that all about? Right, I'm on eight kilometers. Two more to go. Oh, it was an emoji, says Jeff. Okay, well, we didn't see it. It just looked like a blank screen. Sinclair, thanks for the ride on. So Ryan Perring is going to do one and a half more kilometers. Yeah, that's about what I'm going to, maybe just a little bit more. I'm going to get to 10K. So I'm at 8.2 kilometers now. So another 1.8K for me. Right, Jeff's going to break in about half a mile. So once Jeff has his break, I'll run on and just complete a 10K. And that'll be us for the evening. And we'll be back tomorrow. And probably turn it up Tuesday tomorrow. So uh, Tour for All is coming to an end if you've been taking part in the Tour for All um, runs. Um, I've done all five. I finished off yesterday with uh, a catch up of Tour for All stage two. So that's all five done for me, but all this week, I think most of this week is catch up. So if you've missed any of the Tour for All runs, then you can catch up this week. 
Uh, Matthias Topping says, is Jeff streaming to? No, um, he isn't streaming live. I, I have suggested to him, maybe he does a, a short live stream at some point, just to get a little bit more on film. The thing is, a lot of um, social media posts will be going to the Centurion Facebook page because that's the uh, company that's organised this run. So a lot of people who are taking part in the, the uh, Centurion One event, all their social media is going onto the Zwift, uh, onto the uh, Centurion Facebook page, as opposed to uh, the Zwift Runners Facebook page, for example. And of course, you have to be a member of that page to see the content. So um, a lot of that content will be lost to anyone who is not part of the Centurion running community. Let's drop a little, uh, little thumbs up on uh, Mr. Downey's head. I can find my mouse. Where's my mouse gone? There it is. There he goes. Right. Uh, Jeff Partridge heart rate is right down now. Much, much, much better. Oh, I say that and now it just jumps up again. Ha! It was at 138 and now it's just suddenly jumped up to 149. 150. Oh my God, he must know I'm watching him. Weird. Look at that. Now in the orange zone, 152. Come on, Jeff, get that heart rate down. Just when we turned over to look at his um, screen, he was on 138 BPM, which was perfect. That's where we want it to be most of the time. Uh, uh, Neil Messenger says, uh, my treadmill will go up to 20 kilometers an hour. Um, what do I calibrate my foot pod to? Um, Neil, it depends what if you've got a Zwift pod, um, depends what your normal pace is. So if you generally run at about 10 kilometers per hour, calibrate the foot, the foot pod to 10 kilometers an hour. Um, there, on the Zwift calibration tool, you have a, a middle point, a slow point and a fast point. So calibrate the middle setting to 10 kilometers an hour if that is your standard run pace. So we're into the night sky of uh, the Zwift Desert. So Jeff's been running for uh, over nine hours now. Nine hours and two minutes of moving time for Jeff. Uh, that's not including breaks. When you look at a screen like this, it can be a bit confusing because what you've got is Jeff's heart rate in the top left of the screen there, Jeff's steps per minute, Jeff's pace, but then right underneath that, you've got my kilometre splits. So that's my kilometre splits under there. Right, Jeff is stopping for coffee. So that's him done. I've got, I'll do one more kilometre, so we'll bang this out a bit quicker. Take it, take care, Jeff. Uh, just um, get through the night, buddy. Get, get, to, uh, get to the darkness, settle your stomach down. 
get through the night and we'll see you in the morning mate take care right off we go last kilometer we'll just blast it out a little bit quicker just stretch the legs out a little bit oh i'm on the bike now hang on let's go back to me Oh, I'm turned round. So final kilometer, final 800 meters now. And then that's me done for the evening. Thanks very much for watching everybody. Like I say, do go and drop a ride on on Jeff Partridge's head. He's still got a long way to go. So he needs everybody's support. If he's gonna get through it. And Danny's still with me. Right on. Tall boys, thank you. set up with Zwift running. Here's what you need. Firstly, access to a treadmill. It could be at home or at the gym, but any treadmill will work with Zwift. To get you moving in game, we need a speed source. Traditionally, we use a foot pod, like the Zwift pod or the Stride, but you can also use the Run Smart treadmill sensor, your Apple Watch, one of the newer Garmin watches, the TSS app, and if you have a smart treadmill, your treadmill will connect directly to Zwift without the need for another device. Now, simply download the Zwift app onto a Mac, a PC, an iPhone, an iPad, an Android device. Zwift even works on Apple TV. Finally, pair your speed source in the app. Pairing heart rate from your watch or a chest strap is also a great addition to Zwift. And that's it. You're all set up for solo runs, solo or group workouts, challenges and real-time racing on Zwift with people from all over the world. And that's it. 10K done. Uh, Neil, you need to type in, you need to go to the Zwift Companion app. So that's the blue app on your phone. And go to Find Zwifters. And then type in Jeff Partridge. Jeff G, not J, but G E O double F. And Partridge, P A R T R I D G E. Jeff Partridge. Click on him and there'll be a big blue button there to give him a ride on. Right, 
we are done here. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Thanks for your chat on Facebook and YouTube. Um, well done to Jeff Partridge, who's currently on about 70 kilometers. So uh, 130, no, not 100 at all. Um, he's got 90 kilometers, 91 kilometers left to do. So he is not far off halfway now. And um, so we wish him all the best for the rest of the night. It's going to be a long night. He's got to fight his way through it, fighting all those demons and those negative thoughts to get through it. Um, but I'm confident he can do it. But it's all up there in the head a lot of the time. And Jeff knows what he's doing, so fingers crossed he can get through it. And um, we'll see you tomorrow for probably Turn It Up Tuesday. Um, that's tomorrow here on the Zwift Run Live channel and the Film My Run Facebook page. Thank you all very much for watching. Take care and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.